Well, now I have Frank Mattage here with me, and uh, Frank, tomorrow in the races, just what exactly are you going in? Well, um, the team have entered the uh, two cars for tomorrow. The latest here is in the Australian Tourist Trophy, and the D-Type Jaguar uh, GT car is in the New South Wales GT Championships. And who do you think will be your biggest opposition in both races? Well, um, in the Australian Tourist Trophy, I would say that um, Bib Stilwell, without a doubt, is more than a threat, if you can put it that way. And also, the person to be considered is definitely Murray Carr, another Victorian. He um, has this Corvette Special car of his, which is a credit to him. It's beautifully built, very fast, and um, he's enlarged the engine capacity to five litres, which should give him a tremendous amount of power, which is something that's really needed at Bathurst. Actually speaking, that his engine is double the capacity of both Stills and myself. And what's Bib driving? Bib's driving the two and a half litre Cooper Monaco, which he purchased very recently from uh, Stirling Moss. Stirling Moss's own private car it was. Was that the one he drove recently at uh, Warwick Farm? Yes, that's right, the same car. Mm. That was his first outing in the car. Now, yeah. uh, what about the uh, New South Wales GT? Well, the um, Jaguar is particularly well suited at Bathurst, and uh, in view of its uh, recent win at Warwick Farm in the Australian Championship, it is actually even more suited for Bathurst. I should think that um, we stand a very good show there. The uh, main opposition will, of course, come from um, Leo Gagan, who is always there and pushing, and um, Bob Jane, Victorian, in his 300S Maserati, who um, has a tremendous amount of speed in this particular car of his. Uh, he should hit something in the vicinity of at least 150 mile an hour down the straight, and he is a motor car that could really be a big threat at Bathurst. Is uh, Brian Foley competing in this one? Ah, yes, Brian, Brian's competing again. He's, um, uh, he'll be up there to try and do remarkable things the way he always does, but I think possibly that um, the straights at Bathurst will probably uh, run the legs off Brian's car. I think up around the mountain part of the circuit, Brian will probably be the fastest car in the race around the, the top of the mountain, but I think the straights are a little bit long for him, but uh, I mean, he could come through in reliability and still gain a place. That's not out of the question at all. Do you think uh, uh, a track like Warwick Farm is more suited to a car of, uh, of the Sprite? Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, uh, a car like the Sprite at Warwick Farm comes into its own, especially if it's in the hands of an extremely capable driver like Brian. Uh, the, it, its, main advantage lie, uh, its main advantages lie in its cornering powers and its braking. Well, as a, at a circuit like Bathurst, the amount of time spent cornering and braking is a very uh, minor part compared to what it would be at Warwick Farm. Warwick Farm is really the happy hunting ground of cars like Sprites and Formula Junior cars. Frank, which circuit do you prefer to drive on? Well, each particular track, of course, has its own um, features and its own challenges, as you might term it. But I think when it's all summed up generally, I think I would prefer Warwick Farm. It's not very often we have a chance to look under the bonnet of a racing car. Do you think we can have a look under the bonnet of this one? Certainly. Uh, at the moment, we're in the um, throes of preparing the car for the practice. So it's not quite finished, but I think you'll get the general idea. Well, now, this is um, one of the famous Coventry Climax engines. Yes, actually, this particular motor does have a bit of a story attached to it. It is, it is the original prototype engine, the original two-and-a-half-litre prototype. It was built in um, May, I think it was, of 1959. And how long have you actually had it with the car? Uh, we've had the car since uh, March 1960. Now, I noticed, uh, Frank, that uh, there is a, a carby for each uh, cylinder. Is that standard practice with racing cars? Oh, yes, it has been there for quite some time, yes. The idea is, I mean, uh, airstream and gas flow have become tremendously important things in these days of uh, smaller capacity engines. And it has only been in the last 10 years that development on the carburation side and you know, airflow side and exhaust has really come into its own, and this is one of the de developments of it. Frank, when you look at the uh, Climax uh, made a close-up, it really isn't a great deal of it, you know, for the power it uh, develops. No, actually, it's really smaller in dimensions than the average Harden, really, to look at. Uh, the um, actual block itself is quite small. Now, what power would this one develop? This motor develops 200 brake horsepower at uh, approximately 6,000 roofs. And uh, what's its capacity? 2,492 uh, two, uh, cc's, nearly two and a half litres. Now, another thing I, I noticed that you have uh, on this car are the disc brakes. Mm. Now, a lot of people have heard of disc brakes, but I don't think too many people have really seen them. Now, what's the big difference between a disc brake and the ordinary type? Well, a disc brake is basically simpler. It is uh, much, much more efficient. It's a pity that more motor cars aren't really equipped with them, especially some of the uh, larger American cars. 
the, um, the whole principle of it is instead of having an external drum with shoes pushing outwards against that drum, you have the one sort of, uh, single disc which spins between two pads. And when you apply the brake pedal uh, pressure, uh, oil from the uh, master cylinder presses on each of these two pads which are situated on one on either side of the disc and they press together towards the disc. So you get a squeezing effect? That's it, a complete squeezing effect which allows, of course, no brake fade because there's no drum expansion or uh, anything of that nature, which have been problems with brakes for quite some years. Well, Frank, this has been uh, most interesting, certainly uh, having this close-up look at the uh, motor, and uh, let's hope tomorrow that, uh, well, you bring another success to your cap. We'll be trying anyhow. Thank you very much, Doug.